over there. Yeah, find it pays to make sure. Well, we're done. It's been an absolute pleasure doing business with you, Valerie. Yeah, right. Don't take this the wrong way, but I'd just like to say, I hope you die alone and unloved. <laughs> Oh, just a customer wanting a refund. Why are you looking so happy about it? No reason. I wonder how they're bearing up. Like me, only a hundred times worse. I've had just about enough of this. I want to speak to your manager. But when does she get in? Well, when she gets there, you tell her I called. She'll know who I am. Yeah, and you can tell her that I want an explanation as to why she's keeping my son's body. And you can also tell her that if we aren't able to have the funeral on Wednesday, I'll sue. What's going on? Oh, flaming bureaucrats at the coroner's office. Did I hear that right, that the funeral's Wednesday? Problem? No. Dad, what are you even doing here? I own the place. What's your excuse? I just came to check the messages, you know, see that everything's ticking over. Well, I've got it all in hand, so there's no need. You can just push off home, all right? But what are you waiting for? I'll see you later. yesterday. How do you mean? Well, did we win or did we lose? Only the accounts haven't been filled in. Oh, yeah, Paul was meant to do it yesterday, but he got bogged down with some Well, couldn't you have done them? Well, I didn't get back till there. I, I can do it now if you want. No, 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 it's all right. If a job's worth doing, it's uh, worth doing it, son. Well, uh, actually... What? Well, this vase came in yesterday. I think you should take a look at it. Oh. Yeah, I think it might be worth some All right. Oh, hello, pet. Do you fancy a coffee? Two hundred and sixty-five pounds went walkies from my cash box yesterday. What's that got, got to, to do with you? I checked our security tape. A little part of it's been wiped. No, I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. I know that you do. Look, it's not my fault if Rodney has got dodgy security equipment. He hasn't. It's just that his son has a very dodgy mother. What the hell do you think you're playing at? Sorry, not me, Gov. Excuse me. I'll see you at the bus stop for shopping. OK. Mm. Hiya, love. Hiya, Len. Hey. You got a second? Yeah, I've got several of them. Could go even as far as 60 of them. Take a pew. <laughs> What's up? Well, uh, I was wondering if you'd consider coming back to the garage for a bit. You are. I know I'm asking a lot. I'm, I'm just, I'm worried about losing business, you know. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. So, while Scott Wins is in prison, I'm supposed to stop his business going under. No. Go away, we're closed. Mr. King? Edna, uh, um, come in. Sorry, I thought you were a rep or something. I saw you come in earlier. I, I thought I'd see if you were all right. All right is a relative term, I suppose. Oh, Tom, I am so sorry. Can't say you didn't warn me, can I? I, d I don't think I... There's a price to pay if I carry on the way I'm going. That's what you said. What goes around comes around. Well, I wish I hadn't. And I wish the last words I said to your son hadn't been so harsh. If I'd have thought I... Don't blame yourself. You were right. Look what happened. I'm sorry, Edna. Oh. You can imagine. I came to offer my condolences and to see if there was anything that I could do, is there? Make it like it never happened. 
But you have to ask, don't you? Listen. I think you'd better consider me temporarily back in the fold. There is no point in you trying to run this place. I can't ask that, and I not have to. Oh, it's all right. Really. Thank you. Oh, yeah. He's following me around like an avenging spirit's really going to make us confess. You know who's going to get blamed, don't you? Me or Danny, or both. Well, I'm sorry about that, sweetheart, but there's nothing I can do, because I've done nowt. Oh. Yeah, I suppose that's true. In which case, you won't mind if I go and show Dad the security tape, telling him everything I know, as you're completely innocent. Fine by me! See you then. Paul, wait! Simple choice. Either you tell Rodney, or I will. It's not as simple as that. Simple choice. All right. Now. Right then. I'll catch you later, yeah? I think you better drink that up and get back to the garage, Kane. Come on. We've had a lot more than an hour now. What if I have? There's work to be done while I'm doing my bit trying to find someone to help you. I've been ringing around garages all morning. Scott's better off inside if he gets this from you. I'll come when I'm good and ready. I mean it, Kane. I said, I'll come when I'm good and ready. Thanks very much, Edna. And uh, I'll see you this afternoon. Bye. Hiya. Funeral's Wednesday, apparently. So you found time then? Oh, down at the office, barking orders over the phone as usual. Yeah, well, he's coping with it in his own way. He's got more to cope with than most. How do you mean? What's this? Bax's last message. It's funny, isn't it? That cliche they always say at funerals. Why do the good ones always go first? There isn't black and white. All Max wanted to do was the right thing. But if he had it done, he wouldn't have got his dad's approval, would he? And now look what's happened. Oh my God. And Tom's seen this? Yeah. So now, there's only one thing left to do. I suppose I should wait till after the funeral. You're not thinking of showing this to anyone, are you? Of course I am. Max's last wish was to exonerate Paddy. Oh, darling, you can't. It would destroy your dad if this came out. No, I think that we should keep it to ourselves for the time being. We don't want to make things worse for him, do you? All right, what the hell's going on? I told you I'd do that. Yeah, I noticed. And I also noticed you providing me with a series of distractions to stop me doing it myself. Hence me sending you out for coffee. Rodney. Where's the £265? I don't know. I, I came to cash up yesterday and the books didn't balance. And what? And what, eh? Were you hoping I wouldn't notice? Uh, I don't know. I was going to try and find out what had happened to it. I must have made a mistake somewhere. There's no mistake, Danny. The money is missing and it didn't just disappear into thin air. Oh, I see. So I must have nicked it there. Well, yeah. somebody has. It's the second time money's gone missing. And as you're the one who was trying to put me off the trail, it looks like you're the... Well... Prime suspect, doesn't it? You what? Fantastic. After all this... I oh, forget it. You know what? You can stick your job! Danny! Have you spoken to Mother yet? Not now. Danny, give me a second, will Why you? Why should I? But I apologise, right? I was a bit quick to jump to conclusions. Mate, can you blame me? I was angry, for God's sake! Money's gone missing, again. There's three of us that work there. You're obviously, but Paul wouldn't steal from me. Why? Because he's your son. <laughs> what, would you two's always having been so close? Danny... I'm sorry, I... I know it wasn't you. I just can't believe it was Paul, either. It doesn't matter to me. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't work for you anymore. Orin.
Guess where I've just been. <sighs> all right, before you don't. see it... Don't you dare try and think up an excuse. And above all, don't you dare try and lie to me. But it's not my fault. Yesterday, you came into my place of work and blatantly stole 265 pounds. And I'm willing to bet that you came in last week and stole money then as well. And this morning, you promised to confess. But now, Rodney has accused Danny. Oh, no. So you plainly haven't. So just how is it not your fault? Actually, it's sort of yours. What? Well, you had to tell Jimmy Pepper he wasn't your dad, didn't you? At the time you were in Newcastle. What's that got to do with anything? He wanted the child maintenance back. And more. More? Your wedding. My wedding? Oh, what's the big deal? All right, I was on the uppers a few years back and I told Jimmy Pepper you were getting married. And then I got him to sub me. You said yourself he was a nasty piece of work. Just give me a minute to get my head round this. My wedding? It's not a difficult concept to grasp. I was ripping him off. Well, you were never going to have one, were you? Well, apparently not. Anyway, after he knew the truth, he turns up here, doesn't he? And when my back's turned, he nicks all of Eric's antique furniture, tells us I can have it back if I pay him the cash. This is the same furniture that you let everyone believe was out on loan for a photo shoot? I know. Sounds mad, doesn't it? No. This is you. It's all starting to make sense. Anyway, I'm trying all sorts of ways to get me hands on this money. Bank loans, credit card applications. Oh, don't worry, they turn me down flat. No, really? Yeah, and it doesn't get better from there, I can tell you. Because now, they had me name and address. Thanks. I really need this. Yeah. It's tough always being there for them, isn't it? I guess. Stop them falling apart. It's usually one of us, isn't it? I noticed you went off on your own yesterday, when I was looking after Jimmy. I, I had to get out of the madhouse for a, half an hour. Dad ranting and Carl losing it. I can't. Yes. Well, it's very nice to see that you've dressed properly for the interview. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Well, there's plenty who wouldn't, particularly considering the post that's on offer. You mean I'm not here for Chief of Sales? Pardon? Oh, uh, oh uh, nothing. You, you carry on, just uh, joking around. <laughs> yes, well, it might be an idea to remember what's happened to the owner's family before you start turning this into a, a stand-up comic routine. It's all very well having a happy-go-lucky attitude, but are you prepared to commit to this job? Look, Edna. Mrs Birch, you know all about me. You know that bin man was never going to be top of my list. I'm the kind of bloke that can turn my hand to anything if the money's short enough. And right now, the money's very short indeed. Yes, well... Seeing as we are rather short of staff at the moment, I will organise a short-term contract. You can start whenever you like. You mean I've got the job? Welcome to King and Sons. Oh, yes! Oh! <laughs> <clears throat> oh. oh! All right, for start. Yeah. What are you doing back this early? Look, I'd better make a contribution while I still can. I might be the last one for a bit. Oh, come. Cool. Quit my job. Why? I, th I thought you liked it. Yeah, I did until Rodney accused me of stealing. No. Afraid so. OK, so now you've got a bailiff after you for unpaid council tax. It was all just spiralling out of control. That's one way of putting it. 
but wait a minute. I seem to have missed a beat. Where's Jimmy Pepper in all this? Oh, I paid him off by now. I've got all the furniture back. Eric didn't even suspect anything. Well, how did you manage that? Well, obviously, Jimmy was happy to take cash. And you remember when I was mugged with the Woolpack's takings that time? Yeah, but you... No. Jimmy Pepper. You had a black eye. Jimmy Pepper. He hit you? Well, yeah, but I had to provoke him into doing it. We had to make it look realistic. Yeah, well, obviously, standards have to be maintained. Otherwise, where would we be? That was Diane's money. Oh, what can I say? I was desperate. Desperate, yes, I know. That's a refrain I'm getting used to. Go on, bailiffs. It was serious money they were after. I don't know how I cope, to be honest. Your cool, unchaotic approach is my guess. I, mean, I was pulling in all my threads. Robin, Peter to pay, whoever, working all hours, skimming off the top, putting every bit of profit I made back into that debt. And do you know what? I was doing it. I was that close. On my final payment and nobody would have been any the wiser. And then Eric Pollard has to give that old folks home a discount, doesn't he? Oh, some people have no heart. I was 250-odd quid down. I was just coming to borrow it off you, but you were skint, so I borrowed it off Rodney. Unofficially, like. Oh, dear God. So, what are you going to do? I'm not going to do anything. But you are going to do what you were supposed to do this morning and tell Rodney. Because before we can sort anything else out, you have to tell Rodney about that money and clear Danny's name. Oh, God! Oh, no, no. You want my help. You do the right thing for once in your life. And then we'll talk. And I mean it. Seriously. Because if you can't, then I don't think you and I have any future. There you go, everyone. Well, Thank you. here's to my new job. Are you ever going to tell us what it is? Well, I suppose I ought to. Hmm. Well, come on then, don't keep us in suspense. Well, as of tomorrow, I'm going to be in the King's organisation working on the bins with Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Oh, yeah, like you'd have got all excited over a dustman's job. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell you what, why don't we try and guess what you are? Oh, yeah, yeah. and if we're right, then you can tell us. Yeah. Uh, Sales manager. No, bin man. Oh, plant coordinator. Bin man. Oh, no, hang on, think of his qualifications. Yes. Uh, uh, I'll bet he's in charge of catering for all their functions. Yes. No, I'm going to be a bin man. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> the truth is, I don't know what to believe anymore. I'm pretty sure Danny hasn't stolen anything. But... Jenny leaves one person. You sure, please, Diane. Listen, I need to talk to you. Do you mind? In the middle of a conversation here. Sorry. Rodney thinks Paul might have been putting his fingers in the till. Oh, that's daft. Or one of them has. But it must be Danny. Is that what you're going to say? Then it must be Danny. Why? I, I didn't say that. Just, well, Paul wouldn't, that's all. What? Paul is our son, and he's so perfect he couldn't possibly do anything bad, is that it? Come on, calm down. Well, he Pat. just makes my blood boil, that's all. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's betrayal, especially from one's own flesh and blood. Well, talk to him about it. Don't take it out on Paul. I intend to talk to him. Don't you worry, just as soon as I can. Well, I don't think you can go around making wild accusations. Look, what you think doesn't concern me at the moment. You've been far too indulgent with that boy. Look where it's got him. Look where it's got me, if it comes to that. I try and accommodate him in the firm, and look what happens. Didn't fancy a drink, then? Paul, uh... It's all right. I saw what happened. 
Gave you a right mouthful, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Well, that's not surprising. Still, he'll come round once we've paid him back. We? Oui. I'll get onto the bank first thing, see what I can do. Oh, Paul. I knew you'd come through for us in the end. You've told the truth. So from now on, I'm on your side. 